the genesis of erosion of the shores of Victoria Island and Lekki in Lagos, Nigeria, dates back to 1905 with the constructions of East and West Rock Moles, which were built to allow improved access of larger vessels into the port of Lagos. This resulted in the interruption of the littoral drift of sand and sedimentary materials, which were previously deposited on the shores of Victoria Island and Lekki, but were now being trapped on the west side of the port of Lagos. Erosion ensued to the east, that is, Barbage, and the coastline of the Lekki Peninsula. By 2005, some 100 years after construction of the moles, two kilometers depth of the beachfront, the entire barbage was lost to erosion leaving Victoria Island directly exposed to heavy ocean surges with no protection from the Atlantic Ocean. Victoria Island and Lagos were facing grave danger and action was needed to stem the relentless surge of the Atlantic Ocean. The Lagos state government called for solutions and in 2006, South Energy X Nigeria Limited, the city planners and designers of Echo Atlantic City, were granted permission to build a preliminary sea wall to protect Victoria Island from flooding. But Lagos state government wanted to go much further with an audacious plan to overcome 100 years of severe erosion by building a new city on reclaimed land whilst putting a formidable defense against the ocean in place at the same time. And this is Echo Atlantic City. Echo Atlantic is a new city built on a vast area of land reclaimed from the ocean along the coast of Victoria Island, Lagos, Nigeria. Standing on 10 million square meters of land reclaimed from the ocean, Echo Atlantic and by extension, Victoria Island will be protected by an 8.5 kilometer long seawall, the Great Wall of Lagos. The Great Wall of Lagos is a large sea revetment that protects the emerging new city as well as Victoria Island from the threat of flooding due to ocean surge. The wall was designed by Royal Hascon and Marine Engineers from Holland, world renowned for their over 100 years of experience in urban planning and development. The first rocks for the Great Wall of Lagos was placed in mid-2009, after dropping the rocks into the sea to form the base of the sea wall. They had to be shaped and formed using excavators equipped with a pinpoint accurate GPS system. This GPS system ensured the accuracy of the placement underwater to create a finished product that met the design specifications. After the rocks begin to take shape below and above the surface of the water, the next step was the building of the primary armor section of the seawall, a series of interlocking X-shaped concrete blocks known as acropodes. Each acropod is made of reinforced concrete built on site and weighs a total of 5 tons. Eventually, 100,000 acropods will be placed in the predefined grid using a GPS system for pinpoint accuracy, of which over 50,000 have been placed. In addition, samples of the concrete used to build each batch of the acropods were sent to an independent lab to ensure the concrete reached a proper level of strength. As the final step of the Great Wall of Lagos, a 8.5 km long, 12.5 m wide promenade will be built on top of the Great Wall. This promenade will provide a tremendous amount of recreational space to residents looking to take advantage of the oceanfront open area and impressive ocean views. But there is concern voiced in some quarters about the effect the wall construction is having on adjacent shoreline communities. The Echo Atlantic project has been criticized by local residents living nearby, saying that ongoing construction works have caused coastal erosion and ocean surges, as ocean water surges through living areas, flooding access roads and taking down electricity poles, and forcing residents to relocate. According to some climate scientists, the same wall that will protect Echo Atlantic would worsen the situation for neighboring areas not protected by it, which includes much of Lagos.